Hi everyone, this is Life Peng from Today's Inspiration, and this is episode four of Looking Through Old Magazines. You know, for the first three episodes of Looking Through Old Magazines, we were looking at some of the physically largest magazines of the mid-20th century, and some of the largest, most substantial double-page spread illustrations that people used to see in those extra large magazines. Today we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum and go to some of the smallest magazines of the mid-century. This was called a digest and this one is Coronet. Let's take a look inside. Most of us are familiar with Reader's Digest. It's been around forever, but until I really became interested in discovering mid 20th century illustration and researching it, I'd never heard of Coronet Digest. I think it was meant to be pretty much the same sort of content that you would find in Reader's Digest. There are a lot of news stories, political stories. There are short stories and little anecdotes that seem to have either a humorous or a, a moral lesson to them. There are pages that have jokes and advice for housewives, and there are illustrations throughout. Now, the cover is printed on a matte paper, and matte paper is not the best for full-color, fully-painted artwork. So Cornet used a lot more line art than it did painted artwork. Painted artwork on a matte paper, especially a sort of lower quality matte paper, tends to bleed into the paper fiber and the image tends to look a little soft. The cover is not bad, but you'll see what I mean later on as we flip through this issue. Now, Coronet has a notice, I'm not sure if you can see this, that it was published by Esquire, and I assume that they mean Esquire magazine, and in here is a little note about sending manuscripts and artwork to 488 Madison Avenue, New York. At the same time down, same time down here, it says Coronet is published monthly by Esquire, 65 East South Water Street, Chicago. And the thing that I've noticed about looking through Coronet is there are often a lot of illustrators doing work in Coronet that seem like they are Chicago illustrators based on you know all the different information I've managed to gather over the years. So it's kind of an interesting magazine in that sense because most of the major magazines from the mid 20th century were published in New York and therefore most of the illustrators were New York illustrators. Coronet is kind of a neat opportunity to see work by other artists. And again, because the paper quality is not great, they tended to use a lot of line art. So let's take a look. And here's an example right away of a little ink line illustration. Now this one doesn't seem to be signed. You can see that they've added a spot color of blue. And this would have been done with a separate blue printing plate. And then those two plates would have been put together at the engravers. The artist probably prepared that blue plate as part of their original artwork, but it would have been a separate piece of art from the black and white line art. Here's another little illustration, again, unfortunately not signed, in a really unusual cartoony style kind of neat and definitely has a very 50s flavor to it. And this is the November 1952 issue of Coronet. Uh, a little ad for Lionel Trains. Another little blue and black spot illustration. This one's signed, if you look very closely, Lacano, and that would be Frank Lacano, who did a lot of work for oh, all sorts of magazines, definitely a lot of the men's adventure magazines. Uh, I think he did a lot of work for Blue Book, if I remember correctly. 
I'm a big fan of his work. I think he also did work for Red Book, <laughs> coincidentally. It's another little spot cartoon. And a print ad, and what's interesting is that this full color print ad, they actually printed on a better quality paper. So in some cases, I guess, especially for advertising purposes, they were willing to spend a little more money on better quality paper. Let's flip ahead and have a look. Yeah, so compared to those giant illustrations we were looking at in the first three episodes. In this case, what we're looking at sometimes is totally teeny tiny, but also very terrific artwork done specifically for this very small and cheap format. Like, look at that, there's my thumb. And look at how small that little cartoon is. And despite the fact that it is printed really small, don't think that it was actually drawn that small. It might have been drawn quite large. Now, here's a really interesting piece, and this is an example of why I say I think Coronet used illustrators pretty extensively from Chicago, because if you look very closely in the bottom corner, you can see the very distinctive signature of an artist named Fred Steffen. And Fred Steffen was definitely a Chicago illustrator based on all the research I've done. And I just love his styles, really unique. And that's a really nice piece. Uh, let's see. Okay, ah, and here we go. Another illustrator I'm fairly familiar with. If you look closely, you can see a tiny little AT, and that means this is by Al Tarter who again was an illustrator who tended to do a lot of line drawings for a lot of different publications, especially um, magazines like Red Book and some of the men's magazines and so on. And now here's something in a totally different kind of ink line style. And I wish I could make out the signature, but it's really hard for me to figure out who that is. But if you have any ideas, please leave a comment down below this video and let me know what you think. Again, a totally teeny tiny little cartoon drawing. And there, for size comparison, is my thumb. All right, we'll skip ahead to a few of these to this center feature here, which was illustrated by Ren Wicks. And Ren Wicks was a really top illustrator on the West Coast. He worked in California, I think in LA. And this is such an awesome feature because they got Ren Wicks to do a whole series of full color illustrations about flying saucers. And they are awesome. I showed these years ago on the Today's Inspiration blog. And they were a huge hit at the time. And it's really interesting when you see work like this from the 50s, because you just know that it really informed the look of sci-fi in movies and magazines and comic books for years and years and decades to come. Now, one thing to think about is the amount of work that Ren Wicks put into this particular feature for Coronet and what that might have paid at the time for a commercial artist of his caliber. And I don't think I'd be wrong to say that he would have literally been paid thousands of dollars for this series of paintings. And in the 50s, when a lot of people were making an okay living, you know, pretty good middle-class living, earning 50 or or $100 a week, being paid several thousand dollars for what probably amounted to, oh, I don't know, one, maybe two weeks worth of work for him is just 
pretty astonishing, pretty mind blowing. Now, next to that last piece by Renwick's, if you look carefully, you can see a signature here, and that is Rayberger, which is Gustav Rayberger, who was again an illustrator who did a ton of work for. Uh, all, all sorts of magazines, but especially for Esquire, as it happens, which makes me think that we are talking about the publisher being the same as that of Esquire magazine. Uh, flip ahead a little bit. Some photo features. Hmm, there's a tiny little cartoon. Again, thumbnail size. And, oh, and here's a really great one by Frank Lacano again. Wasn't that terrific? Nothing works like high contrast, right? Very dramatic. And there's a really sweet little cartoon, too. Look at that. Now, here when we get to the back pages, you can see... We saw a piece by Al Tarter earlier that was a line drawing, and here is an Al Tarter fully painted illustration. And as you can see, it's kind of soft. Not that great reproduction. And that's, like I said, the reason that they didn't tend to publish a lot of that kind of thing in Coronet. Oh, and one last one I want to share, although it doesn't have a signature that I can see on it. This is just such a nice strong piece. So well drawn and really speaks to just the incredible draftsmanship of so, so many illustrators in this time period. Really, really admirably strong drawing skills. And it was just the norm at the time. You know, people just took it for granted that everyone could draw really, really well. And that's a great example of that kind of work that I just like looking at it because I just love admiring the skill that goes into something like this. That's it. Our first look at an issue of Coronet. I have a lot of these, way more than I could hold in my two hands. So we'll definitely be looking at more Coronet uh, magazines in the future. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Looking Through Old Magazines. If you do me a huge favor, like this video, assuming you liked it. And if you feel like watching more of these, hit that subscribe button down there.